Hey, welcome to this video about one of my favorite candlestick patterns. It is a Japanese candlestick pattern that doesn't occur very often. I will reveal that right away. It's rather rare, but as is typical, some of the things that don't occur very often are usually the best highest probability scenarios. So that kind of goes hand in hand. You might want to create a scan for this. Pretty easy to create a scan for this and look for it. And if you're a stock trader, for example, you'll find setups like this, as long as you have a lot of different markets to scan for. Uh, the good news is it's a very high probability trade and that's why it's one of my favorites of course so let's look at this and it's called the candlestick kicker kicker okay now it's named a kicker for a very good reason let me first give you the rules for it so first of all it is a two bar japanese candlestick pattern and we're going to start it out on the hard red edge of the screen here so those are the two bars that we're looking for okay what are the rules so the rules are at bar number one of those two it must be a bearish bar and by bearish i simply mean that the close is below the open so on mine it shows red when the close is below the open and it shows green when the open is above the close you might have different colors but you get the idea so that's number one and we want to see it after a bit of a down move so it doesn't have to be a downtrend necessarily but i want to at least see a half cycle down and it closes the last bar. This is the key. The last bar in that move down must be a bearish bar where it closes near the low and definitely closes below the open. So that's rule number one, okay? Now, bar number two must be a bullish bar. And again, basically means a green bar where the close is above the open. Now, that's all good and great, but there's more to it. And this is what really makes it the kicker. So let me take that off and draw one more thing on here so it doesn't get too messy for you. And the thing is here, we've got to have a gap, all right? And there's your gap. Technically, the gap would always actually go all the way down to here. So I'll put that in too. I'll superimpose these over each other. If you want to use the most conservative rules, okay, then you would say the bottom of this bar, the low, of this bar must be above the high of that bar. Now that's not one of the actual rules for a kicker, but if you want to be real conservative about it, you could do that because the bigger the gap, or I should say the more prominent the gap, the more the gap holds, the more power there is behind the kicker. So the low of this bar, sometimes the wick will come down into the range of this wick and that's usually considered okay. What's not okay is if it comes down to the close for sure, and most people don't want it to come into the real body of the previous bar. So the more you allow it to come down, uh, the less conservative the trade is because the less impulse that move had up. And that's what we're looking for. That's the whole point of this pa uh, pattern is that there is a big change in sentiment overnight. Now, I say overnight because this does tend to work best on daily bars, also weekly and monthly bars, but you won't see it as much on intraday bars. And that's because markets tend to gap overnight more than they do intraday. So think of it as, well, here's the logic behind the pattern. Something happened from one day to the next that dramatically shifted the sentiment of the market. The market participants went from being bearish to not only being bullish, but being really bullish so that the thing not, it gapped up and turned into a, uh, a green bar, a bullish bar. And so it's usually news or it's uh, now it could be just rumor that is dispelled. But the point is that if it's a daily bar and it closes above the open, then it's usually not a rumor or gossip that just lasted for five minutes, a half hour or an hour, right? It lasted the whole day. And so that means the market had enough time throughout the day to digest the news and say, yeah, okay, this is real. This is our sentiment. Whereas if it was just gossip or a rumor, then you might get a gap up, but then it comes back down after the market says, oh, that was not real. That was fake news, so to say. <laughs> All right. And let's see what happened after that. So um, goes up pretty nicely. 
And so now again, last thing I want to say about this is that this is just a two bar candlestick pattern, meaning that, and I'll highlight here again for you, meaning that, um, you can't use this alone. So I, I think it's fine to incorporate it into a, uh, a screener of some sort, but you have to then interpret it in the context of the chart. In other words, is it coming in at a trend? Um, let's say it's coming into the end of a long trend up or long trend down. And by the way, the, the bearish pattern would be just the opposite of this. You can get bearish kickers as well. So this is not one that's really occurring in a trend, but um, you do want at least a half a cycle. If it's just in the middle of a sideways market, I wouldn't you know, give much credence at all. Because we, again, we want there to be a bearish sentiment going into this and then the sentiment to change dramatically. That's really the whole point of it. And then from here, it goes, you know, get a little move up, a little retrace, a little move up, a little retrace, a little move up. Then it goes back to your normal um, higher high, higher low type of movement. And now from this point, you use any other rules in your trading method in order to decide where to get out and um, all of that. So this would be one part of a trading methodology, certainly not something that you would trade in isolation, but it's a nice little pattern. And I'll tell you, um, you know, like I said, there's a logical reason why these happen and they're pretty high probability. So I would definitely consider adding this to your trading methodology if it looks good to you. Well, if you got value out of this video, then go ahead and click the thumbs up icon, leave a comment below. I love your comments. Feel free to share it with other people. It's good to share good things with good people. So click the share button below and share it with others. Also, I'm giving away a complete trade strategy. So this one here today is just part of a trading methodology, but I have another trade set up called the rubber band trade, and I'm actually giving that away for free. It takes more than a quick little 10 minute video like these YouTube videos are. So it takes about 28 minutes or so, and I'll give you the whole thing where to get in, where to get out, all that, where to place your stops in a, um, a free little lesson that I have for you. So go ahead and click on the icon in the top right hand corner of the video and get my rubber band trade absolutely free.